committee will come to order without objection. The presiding members are authorized to declare a recess at any time pursuant to Committee Rule 5B and House Rule 11. The Chair may postpone further proceedings on any question of approving any measure or matter or adopting an amendment on which recorded vote on the yeas and nays are ordered. Our first item for consideration is H.R. 559, the Merit Act of 2017. The Clerk will designate the bill. H.R. 559 to amend Title V United States Code to provide for an alternate removal for performance or misconduct for Federal employees. I ask unanimous consent the bill be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Without objection, so ordered. It is my understanding the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Mitchell, will offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute to the bill. The gentleman is recognized to call up his amendment. Mr. Chair, there is an amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 559 offered by Mich Mr. Mitchell of Michigan. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized for five minutes for a statement on the bill and his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to start by requesting unanimous consent to enter two uh, letters in the record, one from the Americans for Tax Reform, the Amer other from Americans for Prosperity in support Without of objection. the bill. Without objection. The amendment in nature of a substitute to H.R. 559 simplifies and streamlines the process for addressing performance or misconduct issues while extending probationary periods for two years. The bill limits grievances of certain actions and limits appeals and permits reduction of due process procedures for certain furlough actions. The bill permits reducing retirement benefits of employees convicted of felonies for actions taken in furtherance of official duties and permits ordering repayment of bonuses and awards that were improperly paid. This is a key jurisdictional area for this committee. It is ensuring a qualified Federal civil service. My amendment the nature of the substitute takes a holistic approach to refining accountability procedures for removing bad Federal employees. It includes important contributions from several of my colleagues, Representative Comer, Barry Loudermilk, Susan Brooks, and Tim Wahlberg, and I thank each of them for allowing the committee to include their ideas in this package. Let's be honest about it. Federal managers spend far too much time and often unsuccessfully trying to address performance issues and deal with employees who engage in misconduct. The Civil Service Reform Act of 1978 created a special authority to remove or demote poor performers. However, the GAO found that removing a poor performer under this special authority, which requires a performance improvement plan, can take six months to a year and sometimes significantly longer. And this does not reflect the significant time involved in an appeal should things now go proceed during the performance improvement plan. It is no wonder that only 31 percent of Federal employees believe steps are taken to deal with poor performance among their peers, which results in reduced morale and engagement. This bill repeals that special authority. However, all performance and conduct problems will now be addressed under the established authority to take adverse actions, such as removals and suspensions. The existing authority to take adverse actions for poor performance of misconduct also needs fixing. Managers have difficulty taking a quick and decisive action. The committee has highlighted past stories of federal harassment, of harassment by federal employees, misconduct, for which leaders, including the Obama administration, testified are unable to take swift action. Before Congress provided the Veterans Administration Department with their expedited firing authority, the VA Secretary expressed frustration. The Department had to wait 30 days to remove an employee who was caught watching pornography with a patient. President Trump expressed his frustration with the current process in taking adverse actions in his State of the Union address, calling upon Congress to act. The bill heeds the President's call and addresses these frustrations. Under the bill, the agency will take adverse actions when an employee has performance or conduct issues within 15 business days. Employees keep, they retain their due process rights, including the rights to respond to a proposed action, to have representation, to receive a final decision, and appeal to the Merit Assistance Protection Board. But the time frames are reduced. An employee must respond within seven business days. Appeal decisions must be done within 15 business days. Appeals to MSPB must be made within 10 business days rather than 30 days. The bill also adopts these streamlined timeframes for processes used in taking action against senior executives. Agencies are limited in taking action under the Senior Executive Service. Currently, senior executives with performance issues cannot be simply removed, but must move down to a general, general scheduled position. The bill permits the removal of a senior executive from civil service for performance issues. Retaining an executive in a GS position may well make sense and is still an option of this bill. However, the current cost of doing so makes no sense. Senior executives who are moved to a GS position are entitled to retain their senior executive pay. The bill removes that entitlement. A couple of other things the bill does that are important. The probationary periods are, are extended 
from one year to two years, plus any period of time required for specialized or formal training. It removes the arbitration decision for grievances and limits grievances. It also addresses a workload issue created for appeals with MSPB on furloughs so that any furlough action for appeal must be at least 14 days in length. The entire federal workforce and, frankly, our productivity are impacted when a small number of federal employees underperform or perform poorly or actually act in misconduct and we're unable to deal with those. This bill addresses that and I encourage my colleagues to support the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. The gentleman from Michigan yields back. The Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Maryland. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I strongly oppose H.R. 559, the Merit Act, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute. The substitute amendment appears to be a compilation of all the anti-Federal workforce bills that have been introduced in this Congress. It would make substantial changes to Federal law relating to personnel actions, grievance procedures, appeal rights, and probationary periods. This measure raises serious concerns about fairness and due process. It would eliminate the requirement for agencies to give employees who perform poorly an opportunity to improve before taking disciplinary action. It would shorten the time frame for considering personnel actions. It would expand the agency's ability to remove senior executive service members from the civil service entirely. <clears throat> and it would limit and in some cases eliminate altogether employees' rights to appeal adverse decisions. The amendment also would make it uh, much harder for employees to seek redress regarding workplace problems. They would no longer be able to file grievances through their union representatives for unjust personnel actions taken against them or if they are furloughed. The doubling of the probationary period to two years would increase the length of time that Federal employees are <clears throat> without protection from retaliation, discrimination, or other prohibited personnel practices. The amendment also would provide new authority for agencies to punish employees by reducing their pensions and taking away their bonuses for misconduct or perform poor performance. The underlying bill and the substitute amendment would, would apply uh, firing authorities uh, specifically enacted for the Department of Veterans Affairs to all other Federal agencies. There are several reasons why the VA law should not be replicated across the Federal Government. First, the expedited removal of authorities in the VA law were meant to address longstanding problems at the VA that prevented veterans from receiving proper health care. Second, there have been uh, reports that the new authorities are being misused by the VA to target the wrong employees. The original intent of the new VA firing authorities was to help the VA get rid of bad actors, especially top officials, senior executives, medical directors who had the ability to direct patient care. However, According to recent press reports, the VA's own data shows that since the law took effect last June, the agency has fired only four senior officials. The vast majority of the other 1,700 individuals terminated were low-level employees. They include 133 housekeepers, 101 nursing assistants, and 59 food service workers. Even worse, a significant number of these low-ranking employees are veterans hired as a part of the Compensated Work Therapy Program. This is a program that hires veterans with mental uh, illnesses and physical impairments. But it's not just the low employees that are losing their jobs. Whistleblowers and those who file discrimination complaints are also being fired. 
So although the new VA law was meant to protect whistleblowers, it is actually doing just the opposite. This should make us uh, pause before we try to replicate this approach across the entire Federal Government. Contrary to its name and intent, the Merit Act will weaken merit systems principles and politicize the Federal workforce. I urge my colleagues to join me in opposing this legislation. Mr. Chairman, I also ask unanimous consent that the July 16, 2018 letter from the National Treasury Employees Union and today's letter from the American Federation of Government Employees be entered into the record. Without objection, the gentleman from Maryland yields back. Uh, for my colleagues' uh, knowledge, votes have been called. There are about 10 minutes left. I am going to try to sneak in one more member who wants to be recognized, a gentleman from Kentucky, and then we will recess subject to the call of the chair and come back, and then we will pick you up, Mr. Connolly. gentleman from Kentucky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to speak in favor of the legislation. Our nation's Federal workers ensure the functions of government from delivering the mail to protecting the homeland are carried out successfully. Highly skilled Federal employees are essential to a government that serves its citizens, and I appreciate and value their service to our country. There should be no doubt in the minds of the American people that our civil service is made up of our nation's best and brightest. Unfortunately, the Federal Government lacks the tools it needs to remove individuals for poor performance or misconduct. To address this concern, the Merit Act makes important common sense reforms to the dismissal process for underperforming employees. It also includes reforms to the probationary period from my bill, the Equals Act, which passed the House of Representatives last year. The bill will extend the probationary period for new hires in the competitive service and initial appointments for managers to two years, in addition to any time required for formal training or licensure. Extending the probationary period gives employees the time they need to demonstrate proficiency in their roles before supervisors have to make a decision about whether or not they are qualified to become permanent employees. This bill is a much-needed fix to the federal hiring process that will benefit both the government and federal employees. Most of all, it will help the American people whom they serve. I ask my colleagues to support the bill. I yield back. Would my friend yield the balance, uh, or just two minutes of his time? I'm going to speak in opposition, but that way we don't have to do five minutes, and he, uh, the chairman can fit me in before we break. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Trust me here. If you'll he, yield to me. He wants you to yield a couple of minutes so he only talks for two as opposed to five. Exactly. Pretty good deal for us today. <laughs> I, I, I see. I thank my friend from Kentucky. Yeah, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm on the other side of, of the issue, and I want to echo the remarks of the distinguished ranking member. Uh, you know, whatever the good intentions of this bill might be, uh, there is real harm this will inflict on federal employees, and it's it's in a context of a, an assault on the federal employee uh, in this Congress and with this administration. Uh, Due process is not just a nice thing to talk about. It's something that ought to be enshrined in everything we do in terms of how we approach the federal workplace. Uh, the rights of federal workers cannot be trampled upon. And I assure my colleagues, you know, for every troubled employee, there are also troubled managers and supervisors who act in a discriminatory way uh, or worse. And, they, and our employees need that protection of due process. And so. Uh, I, I think this is a very flawed bill. It's part of a piece, uh, and I urge my colleagues to defeat it. And I thank my friend from Kentucky for his uh, generous uh, yielding, and I yield back. The gentleman from Virginia and Kentucky yield back. Uh, pursuant to previous order, the chair declares the committee in recess subject to the call of the chair. It is uh, my intention to reconvene immediately after votes.